thank you, Father God, for this day. Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long way, much further than we remember. <laughs> You're good to us, Lord. Certainly better than we praise you. Certainly better than we've glorified you this morning. You're a good God. And you're a great king above all gods. And we love you in this house, Lord. You know, Father, as I'm praying, I'm reminded I shared with Teresa, Lord. I said, sometimes you just have to remind us. And I asked her, did she remember that song, Lord? Remind me, dear Lord. Because we are humans when we walk in this flesh. And sometimes as humans, Lord, we forget. We forget how far you brought us. So this morning, Father, as I minister what you have given me to ministers, to minister, roll back the curtains, Lord, and cause us to remember where you have brought us from. There's a road that we're on, and today is Palm Sunday. And that's when that road began, that we had opportunity to have that road, to accept you. Lord, we bless you today for the word that's going to come forth. We thank you for every ear here in this service and online, whenever it's heard, Lord God. Let people be reminded of this Palm Sunday. Next week is Holy Week, Lord God, that we set aside our time cause our minds to be focused on you. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. We do love you, Lord. We do love you in this house. Every person in here, I believe, loves you. But sometimes, Father, the things that's going on in our life, it can cause us, Father, to just slip up and forget stuff and not a sin, but a weight. And this week, as we go into Holy Week, Father God, we want to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that is set before us. That's what you want us to be reminded of today. So we give you praise because we do love you and we know that you love us. Oh, how you love us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary for us. Every drop of that blood, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it for us. And now we give back to you our lives. Totally committed, sanctified, set apart for you. In the name of Jesus, everybody say amen. Turn around, wave at two or three people before you take your seat. You can do just go say hi to somebody if you want to. But let's just remember this day. Wow, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? <laughs> I wish I could say how good God is. The only thing I can say is hallelujah, give him the highest praise. Tell him how much I love him. I know you do too, right? Yeah, blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord. <laughs> you know, I was looking at that scripture. Thank you, Pastor JB. And I had wrote it down. I want to go to the Old Testament with it first. Look at your neighbor and say, Oh, how he loves me. Say, you know what? He loves you too. Tell somebody else, say, oh, how he loves me. And then tell him again, he loves you too. Do it again. Say, oh, somebody else, say, oh, how he loves me. And he loves me, you too. You know, one of my favorite scriptures, can you turn it down just a little bit, play, but just a little bit softer, thank you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, please this week, 
as we celebrate Holy Week. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But what shall they have? Everlasting life. And God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. I'm so glad about that. But that the world through him might be what? Saved. How many saved folk in the house? Yes. Isn't it good to serve our God? Isn't it good to serve our God? His name is Jesus, Jehovah. Psalm 118, I want to read it from that. Psalm 118, verse 26. There's nothing new under the sun, right? You know, sometimes there are things, and hello everybody out there, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are listening to us. God bless you for tuning in. And even some of our members are watching us on uh, Facebook Live. Good morning to all of you. Um, forgive me for not saying it first, but I'm a stickler for the word and I'll get right into it. Then the Holy Spirit will remind me, say, you didn't say good morning. Good morning to everybody that's here. God bless you for being here today. Appreciate you being here today. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. Now let's get back to the word. Amen. Psalm 118, verse 26. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. I just want to read to the end. God is the Lord, which has shown us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And the people of God say, hallelujah, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Now let's turn to Luke and we're going to, to Matthew chapter 23. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes. Come on, sing it. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Are you coming in his name? All right, then you're blessed. Hallelujah. You're just simply blessed because you're Begin to take steps in the name of the Lord. That's so simple. Now you're sitting down now, but sitting down is not blessed as he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because you got to be moving. If you're coming towards something, you got to be taking some steps. I'm coming, Lord. Right? Hey, that's it. That's it. I, you didn't have to, but you chose to. Because you say, I want you to know I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it requires something. <laughs> Matthew. What did I say? Matthew 23. Got the paper clip here. Oh, glory be to God. God wants his people this week, starting today to fall in love with him all over again. I don't care how you loved him last week. Every day with the Lord is sweeter than the day before. So as when we think about the time that we're celebrating now, Palm Sunday, this was when our Lord and our Savior, what's his name? Jesus. Made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Notice it was said it was triumphant before all the stuff began to happen to him. Because it didn't look like it was triumphant, did it? Y'all see what I'm talking about? As we go this week and just see what happened to him each day, that's all we're going to do. Because you know when I saw you guys, you need the reminder. I need the reminder. 
Everybody out there needs the reminder. So I'm not picking on you. We all need the reminder sometimes because we can do better, right? We can do more, right? Because what we did last year, how we celebrated last year is irrelevant. What are you doing today? Because we're older now. Not only in the, what, the, the bi biological years, but we're older in Jesus. So we've had time to grow. Amen? And when we grow, guess what we do? We show. <laughs> grow and show. Tell somebody again, I don't want you to ever forget this. Oh, how he loves me. And he loves you too. He wants you to be reminded because the only thing that's going to get foolishness out is love. And love never fails. It might look like it's failing, but it's not. We can see that when Jesus made his triumphant entry. All the stuff that came at him. <laughs> Satan thought, oh, I got him now. But boy, was he wrong. And aren't you glad? He loved us so much. He said, oh, I love them. They're in the palm of my hand. I see them. He could call your name out. Oh, how he loves me. Come on, say it. Say, Lord, how you love me. Oh, you need to get a revelation, a greater revelation of how much God loves you. And when you reflect, as I believe that you will do this week, as I go down the list of what happened each day, I believe you'll say, Lord, thank you for reminding me how much you love me. So because of the love that you have for me, I can move forward. I might have to have a heavy foot, but I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. Hey, anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, say it again. Lord, you love me, and I love you. See, we love him because, yes, we wouldn't know what love was if he had not first loved us. So we love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew, I think you should be there by now. Matthew chapter 23, verse 29. No, I think I got the wrong scripture. 39. I said 29 is 39. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth <laughs> till you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In other words, Jesus said, yeah, you're not going to see me no more. But when you see me again, you're going to say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And we just need to do that on the earth. That we see people see us coming. It's not that they see us. We should be so shielded and so hidden with the glory of God, with Jesus on us, until they say, whoa, I thought that was Jesus. And it's him living on the inside of you. It's him living on the inside of you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> is that not powerful? He said, you won't see me no more. But the next time you see me, you're going to say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus said, that will be me. Amen. Amen. And then Luke chapter 13. And then we're going to get on with what is happening this week. We're just going to kind of, you know, this is the first feast, feast of Passover. So we want to just kind of go back and reminisce 
even in a greater way than we've, you know, we've been did in a while. And just think about what our Lord and our Savior did for us. It's a holy week, but it was a very gruesome, tiresome, oh, how he loves us. What he went through for us so that we wouldn't have to. Do you love him this morning? Just take a few moments and tell him how much you love him. Just tell him, say, I love you, Lord. You're the lover of my soul, Jesus. That's, that's what we want to do this morning, is just to remember. You know, he says, remember me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 13, verse 22. Glory be to God. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Straight is the gate, straight, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall say, answer and say unto you, I know ye not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and has taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know ye not whence ye are. Depart from me. We don't ever want to hear the Lord say that. Never. Your work is of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. This is a timely word because we are living in a time where people are not excited about Jesus anymore, not the way that they should. But it still doesn't change the fact, oh, how he loves us. He suffered for us. And he's given us a word today. He said, you don't want the door to be shut. You don't want that ark to be. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It could be one of you going somewhere in the name of the Lord. You need to be received in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. He said, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then it says, verse 20, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. All because of this Palm Sunday. And behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be what? Last. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today, and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen does gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, 
Your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, here we go again. You shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We don't want our house to be left desolate. Am I right? So we say what? Blessed is he who comes. See, we have an opportunity. They didn't have that chance that we do. We can still say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad you can still say that? Your tongue is not cleaved to the roof of your mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, how he loves me. And he loves you too. Yeah. See, we're not selfish this morning. I heard the Lord say, the world will know you by the love that you have one for another. I love you. I laid down my life for you so you ought to love your brethren. I heard him say, I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Are y'all getting it? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The only way that Jesus is walking this earth now is through you and through me. He said, as you go, if you lift me up. <laughs> Do y'all get it yet? If you lift him up, he said, I'll draw. Could it be? I'm just asking a question. Could it be that as we go, we're not lifting up Jesus? And because we're not lifting up Jesus, men are not drawn to us. But I believe the Bible, and I believe this week that there will be some drawing to you as you take advantage of this holy week and you think about what Jesus went through for us. I believe that you, you'll begin to believe that the harvest truly is ripe. It's white for harvest. It's ripe. But the laborers are few. Because if we're lazy when we come in your house, mm, we surely don't have time when we get out there. Because this is where we get our strength from. I know there's power in it. Oh, he wouldn't have said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, exhorting one another, encouraging one another. Because that day is fast approaching. You need me and I need you. But there's a dying world out there that needs you too. They don't know they're dying. But when you come around and you lift up Jesus, you say, oh, something different about you. What's going on with you? Say, it ain't me, it's Christ in me. I'm crucified with Christ. And so that's why all you can sense is Jesus. I'm just letting you know. The life that I allow live in this flesh, you've looked beyond that. See, do you know when people speak like that they've looked beyond your flesh because they see flesh all the time literally that's right they see it all the time but when somebody says mm, you're different that says thank you Jesus say I've been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me and this low fleshly life that I live the life that I live now in this flesh, I don't live fleshly. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. But you know what? He gave himself for you as well. See, you don't stop it at you. See, he gave himself for you. You want to know him? You want me to tell you something about him? Let me share my testimony with you. Let me tell you how I got born again. Let me tell you where I was headed 
We just don't have time to talk anymore. We're too busy. <laughs> but this week, I really do pray that you will slow down, be like that horse or that mule, put the bridle on it. <laughs> See, when the bridle said, Lord, bridle me, you ask him to do that. Say, bridle me because when you bridle me, I, I, I won't be running all over the place. My husband was sharing about Shorty yesterday. He was sharing something about how when you put something on his face, and he's a mule, and, and, but when you put all this on him, you know, he got to go where you lead him. But when you take it off, Shorty kicks and just runs. And some of us, we'd have lost the bridle. We like Shorty that don't have the bridle on anymore. We all over the place. <laughs> I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Jesus. <laughs> We've made it all kinds of stuff. Repent, this is a good time to do it. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you, Jesus. Jesus is the center of it all. We got to put him back in, as the center. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures forever we used to sing the song his truth keeps marching on glory glory hallelujah <laughs> y'all remember that song his truth is marching on but it only can march when you take those necessary steps because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Now let's go to the to the road, to the, the weak. Oh glory be to God. Say, oh how he loves me. And say he loves you too, you tell your neighbor. You know, because we don't want to sound selfish. We're the body of Christ. I say we are the body of Christ. And you know the rest of that confession that I do is Satan has no power over me nor over you when we overcome evil with good because we are of God and have overcome Satan how did we do that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world it all started <laughs> when he sent for the donkey <laughs> and they say you, you want us to do it I'm just paraphrasing. Just tell them that the master has need of it. And when they came and they said, what, what you doing? I'm just paraphrasing. What y'all doing? Nobody told you you could have this. And they say, the master has need of it. Oh, take it. Do you need another one? Come on. It's something about the name of Jesus. And he goes before us. <laughs> you know, when we think about this week, even though we know that next week we celebrate the resurrection, that's what we celebrate. He got up. But today, this week, to make the getting up more exciting for us, we're going to go see how much we can go through what Jesus went through as far as thinking about it and just we're not going through it I mean it like that but we're going to meditate on it we're going to think about it get Jesus back in our hearts again in a stronger way and when we do that as we think about it it's going to make us not just say oh how he loves me Oh, how I love you, Jesus. 
Oh, how I love you, Jesus. You first loved me, and I love you back. But you got to get it in your heart. You got to think about what he's done for you. That's so amazing. So I don't understand it all. I know that I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amen? Amen. So let's look at some sufferings of Jesus. Now let me, I brought this up here so I could use this as the Bible for myself. Let's turn to Luke 22. No, Matthew 20, Matthew 26. We're going to be in there mostly, but let's, um, let's look at Matthew 26. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes. That got in me this morning. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Blessed is he who Y'all like it too. Come on, bless it. Hey, yes, Lord, bless it. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You got Matthew yet? Oh, glory be to God. I love you, Jesus. Mm, just take a moment and again take a love break. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just sometimes just can't be quiet. Hey, hey, glory to God. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for all of us and the whole world. And I know that as we celebrate Palm Sundays, there are people all over this nation celebrating just as we are. And my prayer is that we would lift up Jesus as the body of Christ because we are the church of the living God. This is a physical building, but we are the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Do you believe Jesus? Jesus said it. And I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory. Worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship the Lord out there. Bless him for a few moments. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're good to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes. Oh, we're thinking about you, Jesus. You are soon coming, King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now let's look, because we need strength. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes. Glory. Matthew chapter 26. Hallelujah. Verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Talking about Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior. He began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Have you ever been heavy? We're talking about Jesus. Oh, how he loves us. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. 
tarry ye here and watch with me. Is that what he said to them? So when we see that, we see that the, the physical and the spiritual sufferings of Christ begins in Gethsemane. For the sake of time, we don't, turn, we don't need to turn there, but write it down so that you can meditate on these scriptures this week as Jesus goes on his journey for us. Luke twenty two forty four 44 said, he sweat as it were great drops of blood. We've never, that's never happened to us. Under great stress, the small capillaries in the sweat glands can break and mix blood with sweat. <laughs> wow, that was some heavy praying for us. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm. He even said in verse 39, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But oh, I love the people in the earth. That's what you sent me for. Nevertheless, <clears throat> not as I will, but as thy will, Lord. I still love them, Lord. I'm obedient to what you tell me to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just think about it. He said, let this come pass. But nevertheless, see the love that he has for you. If I don't go this route, man will be doomed forever. That's not what I want. That's why he stretched his arms out wide for us. Whew, glory be to God. Let this cup pass. That tells us that sometimes things can happen in our life and it's like, Lord, this is more than I can bear. But when he didn't let that cup pass, because he did not let that cup pass, oh, we can make it with you, Jesus. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. What about you? Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear that song. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. That's what Jesus was saying. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. Hallelujah. Y'all know music. <laughs> I enjoy music. Hallelujah. So we see he began to be sorrowful. That was the first thing that happened as he began his journey. And even in the midst of that, didn't Peter betray him? They all forsook him. They all forsook him. And then we see the next thing that happens is they spit, they buffeted, they smote him. You, you don't even want a person to be standing there talking to you and their spit get on you, do you? I mean, let's be honest. No, you don't. Because then you think, you're in my private space. Come on, that's a little bit too close. You know, you back up. Even though it wasn't intentional. But with them, it was intentional. And I don't mean they spit on him one time. 
you know, it said how they, you know how you do? And they just spit. Oh, how he loves us. They just spit on him. Degraded him. Smote him. You say you the son of God. Blindfolded him. Tell us who's smacking you now. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son and he knew he could handle it for you and for me and you out there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They blindfolded him. They mocked him. They repeatedly not one time, not one man, but repeatedly spit on him and struck him in the face. And that was just the beginning. <laughs> oh, glory to God. After he was arrested, I said it earlier, that's when he was abandoned by his disciples. He was abandoned by them. I think it's 55. Let me look. I want you to look at that this week and begin to think about, oh, how you love me, Lord. Yes. When I read that, verse 55. Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I dangerous, revolutionary, that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But you know what? I got it. This is how all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. Because scripture cannot be nullified. It cannot lie. You hear apostles say that all the time. And then it says next. At that point, do you see this? The end of 56? At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Isn't that something? They couldn't keep and stay up to pray. And now when this happens, they're like, <gasps> they run. Not that they didn't love him. They were afraid. But did that stop him? He said, you know what? I, this is it. Even the 12 that's been around me, and they, they should have my heart. And they're running and deserted, deserting me. But I'll say it again. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. They desert him. And yet he still, he said, the scripture must be fulfilled. Glory to God. Ha. <laughs> Jesus is so good. Even after they turned their back on him, he still, this is only the second thing that happened. After the, the sufferings of Christ, we're in the second part. After the arrest at night and abandonment by his disciples, Jesus is brought before Caiaphas and the Jewish council. He is blindfolded, mocked, repeatedly spat on, and struck in the face. Isn't that something? But he said, I can take it because love is what's keeping me going. Remember, God is love, and love never fails. He says, I, I can take it. I, I still see, I see Funderburg. Oh, 
I look out there and I see Brother Reed and I, I see Mario and Oscar sitting over there. I see all of you. He says, okay, ooh, that gave me just a little bit more oomph. Mm. I'm, I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. So now the next thing is they deliver him to Pilate. Number three. In the morning, Jesus battered and exhausted is taken across Jerusalem. Already they just carried on with him and he had to be bleeding by then. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus. Every drop that fell was precious before he even got to the cross. Battered and exhausted is taken across Jerusalem to be interrogated by Pilate. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> he did it for you. And he did it for me. <sighs> and look what happens. Let's see, I think it's verse 21. The governor answered and said, let me see. Verse 21. The governor answered and said unto them, which of the twain will you that I release unto you? And what did they say? Barabbas. Pilate said unto him, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all say unto him, let him be crucified. He said, what has he done? See, Pilate knew better. He is more guilty than they are because he knew better. See, what's he done? He hasn't did anything. Crucify him. Let this criminal go. Oh, how he loves us. And we think that we have unfair treatment sometimes. Unfair? Are you kidding me? You haven't died yet. In the morning, Jesus was battered and exhausted. Remember, he became flesh for us. That's why he can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He know what it feels like. He went through this so he to tell you, you can do it. You can make it. You don't have to go that route. You don't have to think like that. He was interrogated by Pilate and they released Barabbas. And verse 26, look at verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, had he not got enough the night before? Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank him again. Hallelujah. Thank him out there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't even know if they washed his wounds or what. They, I'm sure they didn't. Spit all over him, blood all over him. He was a spitty, bloody mess. And they brought him before Pilate. And he got scourged. And then verse 26 again says, then release he Barabbas unto them. I want you to remember this. This week, this holy week. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. <laughs> and then we see in verse 20. Go back to 27. I mean, you're in 27. Go up to verse 3. 
Then Judas, it says, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and bought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, we don't care. What's that to us? See thou to that. In other words, we don't care. You know, we're not going to use this money for anything. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? But, um, because we can't use bloody money, but it don't matter to us. And you know what is so sad about it? I hear the Lord is saying, there's a lot of people in the world today that I don't matter to. But some of it is because we as the body of Christ, we're not lifting up Jesus. Because I know that God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. So he said, if he said it, he'll do it. He'll back it up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw. He ain't say no monkeys and no dogs and no cats or nothing like that. He said, I will draw all. So they're not being drawn because we're not drawing them. Not condemning, just reminding. Sometimes we just get so busy with life, not realizing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We get so busy that we think we don't have time to tell people about the goodness of the Lord, to tell them to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. So we see, and we know that Judas, what did he do? He hung himself. So then the fourth thing that happened, the Roman scourge consisted of the, this is what we want, to, want you to see. And you know, when we did, we used to do the play here, that was nothing. You could see daylight through him. And as I was looking over the lesson, he says, Remember me. You could see they beat him so bad that you could see his ribs. You could literally see his organs. Remember me. This is what the Roman scourge consisted of. The victim being stripped, talking about Jesus. Now, this is what the Roman scourge consisted of, but we're talking about Jesus. This is what they did to our Lord and our Savior and our soon coming King. They stripped him and they stretched him against a pillow or bent over a low post. And what is so bad they tied his hands. You can't even say, ow, oh. They tied his hands. The instrument of torture was a short wooden handle to which several large leather thongs were attached and bits of iron or bone tied to the thong. Now, can you imagine what that is on flesh? No, we can't. Cause he did it for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did. But yet you did. Because you fulfilled scripture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The blows were laid on the victim's back by two men. One lashing the victim from one side and one from the other side. And history has it that they beat him so much that he got tired and then somebody else would come and beat him. Just beat him, beat him, beat him. This resulted in the flesh being cut to such an extent that veins, arteries, sometimes even inner organs were exposed. And often, 
the victim died from that flogging. But not Jesus. It was hideous. Hideous. The inability of Jesus to bear his own cross is no doubt due to that severe affliction. No doubt. If you had been whipped. Mm. Verse 32 says, And they came out, and they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Mm. The next thing they did is number five. Christ's sufferings. 28 and 29, I believe those are the verses. A scarlet robe, a crown of thorns. Jesus is united and placed in the middle of the Roman battalion. The soldiers put a robe across his shoulders. That's why we don't have it up there, but the wind would have blown it off if we'd had something up there. <laughs> Anybody have anything hanging? If it's not nailed down, <laughs> it's going to be gone. They put a robe across his shoulders, placed a stick in his hand, and pressed a circle of branches covered with long thorns on his head. Thank you for Lord God. We have the mind of Christ. The soldiers mocked and struck him across the face. They had no idea. Struck him across the face and the head, driving the thorns deeper into his scalp. Wow. Oh, how he loves me. Come on, say it to yourself. Oh, how he loves me. And say he loves you too. Y'all gonna remember that this week. Say, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. I'm the little one and I belong to him. Is that you? Say, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. How do you know? For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah. Whew, glory to God. In verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. Everything is scripture that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Wow. At Golgotha, the cross beam is placed on the ground, and Jesus is laid on it. His arms are stretched along the beams and a heavy square. Wrought iron nails is driven through his hand and his wrist, first into the right, then into the left, and deep into the wood. Next, Christ is lifted up by means of ropes or ladders. He said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. So it says they lifted him up by means of ropes or ladders. And you know, when we used to do the resurrection play, it was such a blessing because we knew what it meant. When he would be lifted up, when they would take that cross that's up at the road now and lift him up. Because see, we know, we have hindsight that because he was lifted up, we can lift him up too in our lives because he lives in us. Remember 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of little children and have overcome Satan, the world system in which he operates. Because what? Greater is he that is in me 
than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The cross beam is bound or nailed to the upright beam and a support for the body fastened on it. Lastly, his feet are extended and a larger piece of iron is driven through the two. He's hanging on the cross. That's the only time I can see you wanting to wear a cross is this holy week. Because you say, Lord, because you're reliving it. You hadn't died on the cross yet. But you're going there. But Sunday morning, <laughs> when he got up, there's no... Do you guys understand? And then there's verse 39, number 8. Still talking about the sufferings of Christ. And they, they that passed by reviled him wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroys the temple, that's you, and builds it in three days, that's what you said, save thyself if thou be the son of God, as if he hadn't already went through enough. And he said, you see how the devil is just carrying on harassing him because he wanted him to come down from that cross because we wouldn't have the right to be born again. We wouldn't have the right to be free because he that the son sets free is free indeed. That's where the song came from, I believe. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No chains holding me. <laughs> That's for the resurrection, right? So I'm going to stay here at the Palm Sunday. That's for next week. <laughs> Glory be to God. So as we see, verse 39, how they, you know, just poked fun, just like people do with you. You walking by faith and not by sight. I thought you said you was healed. I thought you said you was going to get this. I thought you said you was going to do that. I thought, I thought, I thought. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But says, it's already paid for. Say, we, we're almost there. We're almost there. So and when we look at number eight, Jesus is now, the suffering number eight, is a pathetic spectacle. Blood streaked, covered with wounds, and exposed in the view of the people. He experienced hours of pain is it in his entire body. And you know, they have this modesty cloth over him. It wasn't like that. They just had him naked. Just, hu just humiliated him. So to let us know that I don't care what they say, I laid bare naked on that cross. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be humiliated because I've taken care of that for you. It doesn't get any worse than that. It's bad enough that they whipped me, they spit on me and did all those things, but I'm naked and I don't have, they won't put clothes on me. They just draped my shoulder. Just humiliated our Lord and our Savior. Oh, but I want to say he got up. <laughs> oh, that's for next week. For, um, <laughs> Glory! I keep hearing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how he loves me. Come on, sell it. Oh, how he loves me. Saying he loves you too. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him. Say, oh, how I love you, Jesus. And you love me too. Oh, yes. He experienced hours of pain in his entire body, fatigue in his arms, great waves of cramps in the muscles, and skin torn from his back. 
Then another agony begins, a crushing pain deep in the chest as fluid began to compress the heart. He feels an intense thirst. Turn to John. Nineteen. Verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. See how this, the Gospels they flow together? Like we as the body of Christ need to? You might be telling the story, but your story is different from mine. Your testimony is different from mine, but it all reflects him. It's all giving him the glory. Amen? It's all about Jesus. It's all about... Now, what's that song? It's all about... Come on. It's all about... Come on, one more time. It's all about... What's his name? There you go. See, I like that. Yeah. Glory be to God. Wow. John 28, 19, verse 28. After this, I'll read it again. Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. What do we have to fulfill? He had to fulfill scripture. What are we supposed to live by? Scripture. <laughs> what did he say? I thirst. He feels thirst and is aware of the abuse and ridicule of those who pass by the cross. Mm. You know, it's one thing to be going through that, but then you're aware that everybody's looking at you. It'll put you on the news. Put your name in the newspaper. But worse than that, those that serve right along with you put you on blast. Isn't that what was happening to Jesus? Yes. And then we come to number nine. We only got one more after this. Come on, just bless him for a moment. Bless him for another moment. Worship him. Worship him this Palm Sunday. Back to Matthew chapter 27, because that's where most of it is coming from. God wanted you guys to be reminded of what he's done for you, what Jesus has done for you. Matthew 27. Verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Where's Pastor JB when you need it? Eli, Eli, Lamba, Sabashithani. Which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? These words mark the climax of his suffering for a lost world. Why? Because sin separates. Why have you forsaken me? But I know he said, I just know he thought because he kept going. It's because of sin. The sins of the world have separated you, me from you, my father. Because there's not going to be any sin in the presence of the Lord. Jesus took our sin. He took our place. He said, why? He said, you know why? I turned.
turn my back on you because I, I know you can handle it, son. But you know you got to get rid of that sin. You got to eradicate it because I want my people back. I want my people back. And you're the only way. You're the way. You're the truth. You're the life. And I hear Pastor Rock saying, because God is saying, I want my forever family. And this is the only way it can happen. Only way. If there was another way, son, I'm just paraphrasing. Daniel wouldn't go. He said, I'm not leaving you. David, a man after my own heart, he didn't go. But of course they couldn't. They had sinned. And Jesus had. He said, you know what? It's only going to be for a while. He experienced separation from God as a sinner's substitute. He said, you took my place, Lord. Oh, how he loves us. The sorrow, you know, with all the stuff, just think about it. Think about the wages of sin. It's death. But Jesus already took care of it. Of all the things that he went through, it's when he had to be separated from the Father. Just think about it. He was separated from the Father for your sin, my sin, your sin out there, the sin of the world caused Jesus. Do you believe Jesus? So he felt forsaken. My God. The next time you're doing stuff and you say, Lord, where are you? Check yourself. Make sure you're still walking in his will. Make sure to the best of your ability, for all that lies in you, <laughs> you're still doing what you're supposed to do. Because we see it right here. This is our Lord. This is our Savior. Why have you forsaken me? And he said, you know why, son? The sins of the whole world is on you. And you got it. You can handle it. And we know that he could. Hallelujah. Hear the sorrow, the grief, and the pain are at the worst. He is wounded, as yet Isaiah said, 53, verse 5. He is wounded for our transgressions, and he gives himself a ransom for many. Him who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He knew no sin, but he was made to be sin. That couldn't be said of anybody else. That we might be what? Made the righteousness of God in him. Aren't you glad about that? Oh, my. He died forsaken. Psalm 22, read that. He died forsaken that we might never be forsaken. Because he says, if you come to me, that will never happen to you. Because Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm always with you. I'll stay with you. Even to the end of the age. Even when you think that I'm not there. I'm there. Just call me and see if I won't show up. He said, that won't happen to you. That's why I took it. So that you didn't have to. 
He said, just call on me. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. What did he tell us he'd do? Give us rest. Take my yoke. Remember we were talking about the yoke earlier? Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> wow. Now, that one, this is not a part of it, but I, I, I just said, use me, Lord, the way you see fit. You know, we were talking about short of being yoked up. But I, I don't want to be free that way. Yoke me up, Lord Jesus. Take my yoke upon you, he said, and learn of me. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but I want to be yoked up with Jesus. I want him to yoke me, and I want him to yank me, and to do what needs to be done. Because I want to stay in your will, Lord God. And if I'm going in the wrong direction, then you'll, you'll get me on track because I give you permission to. <laughs> So there's something to that yoke. And see, some people have gotten away from the yoke. But this holy week, as we're headed to the resurrection, let's yoke up with Jesus again. Say, Lord, I'm tired of being out there running buck wild and acting like I don't have good sense. I'm talking to the body, the world. We need to lift up Jesus so that they can be drawn. Right? Take my yoke upon you. Let me yoke you. And you will be all right. For my yoke is, and my burden is, y'all got it. Oh, yeah. We got some folk found a God that's going to be yoked up again. Even to a greater capacity. Amen? So, we're also redeemed by the sufferings of Christ. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hey, glory be to God. Ha, I keep hearing glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, they cried, Hosanna. Hosanna, Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm almost done. You need to get off them drums in a minute and come on. Won't be long. One more. Ten. Woo Glory. Hey! Hallelujah. Y'all see. Y'all should see me at home. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. Luke 23, 46. It's number 10, y'all. Y'all in Matthew? I think that's where we are. Yeah. 27, verse 15. Jesus cried again. Still talking about the sufferings of Christ. He utters, he utters his final words with a loud voice. It is finished. Can you imagine? It is finished. Whoo. I think that's John 19. I might have said Matthew, but it's John 19. Turn to John 19, third. I want you to see it, what Jesus said. You know, because when he said, I'm thirsty, they gave him vinegar, right? Verse 30 says, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said what? Everybody say it together. It is finished. I'm sure that could be heard. <laughs> and what did it say he did? 
he gave up the ghost. Is that what the scripture says? Then that's what happened. This cross signifies, because when something is finished, it's finished, right? No more suffering. No more pain. It signifies the end of his sufferings and the completion of the work of redemption. Somebody ought to be shouting hallelujah. hallelujah. The debt for our sin has been paid in full. You can stamp it. Boom. Paid in full. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The plan of salvation is established. Only then, let's go to Luke. I told you they work together. The brothers work, those apostles work together. Luke chapter 23. <laughs> glory, glory, hallelujah. Mm. Luke verse 23, chapter 23, verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, what did he say? No, it is finished. Remember, you're coming over. This is just another apostle telling it. What did he say? Father, into thy hands <laughs> I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he did what? He gave up the ghost. So you can see that he was careful. Because Satan was Satan wanted him. But he couldn't have him. He wants you. Don't allow him to have you. Don't allow him to have you. Say, no, I belong to Jesus. Because remember the Bible says, he that endures till the... He that endures shall the what? Yeah. What's the rest of it? The same shall be saved. <laughs> and you, you can see through the sufferings of Jesus that everything we need to go through, he's already bore it. He took our place, right? So when we get in a situation and it looks like we can't handle it, we probably can't. That's why he said, take my yoke upon you. Do it my way, not your way. Trust me. Don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge me. I will direct your path. Right? Then Luke 23. Did I read that? Okay. So we've come to the end of it. Next is the resurrection, which is next week. We'll be talked. Will be talked about. God bless you for being here today. Thank you. The word is powerful. Now, knowing how powerful the word is, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this life? from this day forward that the Lord has given unto you. What are you going to do? How are you going to live it? Who are you going to impact? Are you going to lift up Jesus? This week, I do ask you to do that in a greater fashion. Say, but I always do that. Do it in a greater fashion. You didn't hear that word like I taught it today. It came fresh off the press. It wasn't anything that I heard anybody else teach. When I was praying, I said, Lord, what do you want me to teach on Sunday when the apostle had asked me to teach? He said, it's Palm Sunday. I said, okay. You think he wouldn't say Palm Sunday? That's what we celebrate, right? And he always wants us to talk about him. Right? I said, and he said, just, just remind people. Just remind people of my goodness. Just
just remind people of my faithfulness. Just remind people. And you're going to have to think about this because we're saved. How many saved people in the house? Yeah, we already living for Jesus. But we're just going to say, you know what, Lord? I, 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 you were touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And now you're in us. So we can be touched too. We can kind of get a taste of, you know we won't get a taste of all of it. We can say, Lord, look at what you've done. When you look at this world today, the way that it is, you already, you, you, you feel pain. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You feel grief for some of the stuff that we see going on in the world today. And it's because of a lack of Jesus. And then you have the church that know him. A lot, not all. Act just like the world. Not here. But this message today, you know, we have 40 patients that are listening to us. And we have local people listening as well. And I pray that you share it. Because people need to hear about the goodness of Jesus. Because you know what? I don't care if you have 25 cars. You're just leaving them for somebody to fight over. Because you're not taking, as old folk would say, nary one of them. <laughs> nary one. I know how to speak proper English, but some people understand. They say, no, you're not going to take every one of them. Not one. I don't care how many pairs of shoes you have. They're not going with you. And if somebody don't put the nice ones that you like on your feet when they bury you, you won't even, they won't even get on your flesh. Because they'll say, they're too good to go in the ground. <clears throat> I know she like jewelry and stuff, but I'm going to put some jewelry on her. But it's not going to be that real diamond ain't going in that ground. And that's wisdom. Because that would be foolish. I got lots of money. You can't take it to heaven. You just need more for the kids to fight over. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Give God your heart. Give him your money. Give him your whatever. Whatever he tells you to do, be led of the Lord. Because none of it can you take with you. And I'll close with this. Did I already say close? Jesus is coming back. You're not over here yet. See, that's, that's why I'm taking this long. Come on here, Pastor Milton. He's coming back. I'll let him give the invitation because I'm just talking. I was like, there's nobody tapping me on the shoulder saying, You're closed. Oh, there he is. Now he does it. God bless you. And I pray that this word has blessed you as much as it's blessed me, bringing it forth to remind you of the goodness and the love that God has for you. Remember how he loves you. Amen. Amen. Well, did you guys enjoy the word today? I do believe that with everything that you heard and just the sweet spirit that's been in the place that it caused you to appreciate so much more what Jesus has done for us and caused you to fall in love all over again with him. Amen. And, and, and that's what God loves and that's what he appreciates. You know, this week as we, uh, we celebrate each day um, approaching Resurrection Sunday. Let's be mindful, more cognizant of everything that Jesus has done for us. Uh, let's celebrate him during this high holy time. Passover begins on Wednesday, and we will be celebrating him all week long, okay? And um, so God is so good to us, and Jesus has done so much. So many things that uh, you and I... <laughs> we were not equipped and not able to do but he did it out of the love that he has for us and that's such a wonderful thing amen those of you that are out there that have been watching us 
Uh, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, we pray that you will continue to uh, join us each day on Daily Bread. Join us um, on our YouTube channel. Take advantage of all of the resources, all of the opportunities to dig deeper into God's word that you, your family, and wherever it is that you may be located geographically, that your region, your area will be blessed as a result of the word. So we encourage you to tune in next time. We look forward to seeing you again. On the behalf of Apostles Chastine and Ella Rock, I'm Pastor Milton. We are FCCWO Church. We call you blessed. Amen.